We will neck, we will cut. You can also compare because I don't know. We have to put two microphones on, one for their camera, one for our camera, okay? So he doesn't come to Israel much, to the place he fled from 17 years ago. But this week, Mossab Hassan Yosef, the son of a senior Hamas official in the West Bank, arrived all the way from the United States, and he's ready and loaded. After October 7, there was no way, you know, not to come and stand with the people. I saw the massacre uh, footage, which, you know, changed my life. My life would never be the same after October 7. It looks like you're disappointed in a personal level. Because it is very personal. It's very personal. You were very angry. I was very angry, and I'm still angry. For many years, I spared my father. For many years, I gave him justification. I saved his life. And it was a mistake. It was a mistake. It was a mistake. He's insisting in staying in this sick ideology. And you think he has an idea what happened on October 7? I need to take him and stick his head in the blood of the massacre. He may feel for a little bit what happened on October 7. We know him as the Green Prince, the boy who grew up in Ramallah, the eldest son of Sheikh Hassan Yosef Khalil, one of the founders of Hamas. Terrorism was the family business. The father divided most of his time between the West Bank and Israeli prison, and the prince continued the family tradition, buying weapons and planning terror attacks. But when he was 17 years old, everything changed. He was arrested and for the first time saw prison from the inside and the brutality of Hamas. In those days, suicide attacks became all the rage. For Masab, this crossed a red line. When I stood against suicide bombing attacks some 20 years ago, this was madness in a society where the majority, the vast majority agreed. I disagreed. And that was my punishment for just to think differently in order for me to express myself freely meant for me to be executed. At this point, the Shin Bet entered the picture. The organization managed to turn Masab, and he became an extraordinary intelligence source. For 10 years, he lied to his family and worked secretly for Israel, preventing terror attacks and saving many lives. When Sheikh Hassan Yosef discovered the act of treason, Masab was already overseas. For my father, the, the biggest uh, threat for his existence is to lose his honor, to lose his public image. This is the challenge uh, that I gave to him. He invested his entire energy, his entire life to maintain his public image, his status. You know, now you are the father of the greatest traitor of the cause of your people. You'll have to deal with it. If there's anyone who really knows how to explain what Hamas really is, it's him. Were you surprised? by what happened on October 7th? Look, Hamas brutality was not a strange thing for me. Uh, I witnessed Hamas brutality firsthand for a very long time when I was in prison. They tortured people, they killed people in the worst possible way for suspicion of collaborating with Israel. I cannot pretend uh, that I did not hear their voices. People were screaming day and night in pain of a crime that they haven't or hadn't committed. None of them had a relationship with Israel. Knowing what they do to people in prison, were you afraid for your father's life when you came out in public about your story? Of course, it was a very dangerous uh, situation, but also he's uh, a top leader. So usually, who get, uh, gets punished in that society? Those who don't have power. But those who have power, they get away. That brings me to Sinwar, you know, they call him uh, the butcher from Khan Yunis. He suffocated people with his own hands. He slaughtered people, behead people with his own hands. And those people were Palestinians. It's a monster, self-deluded, psychopath, uh, 
dangerous criminal. He enjoyed. He bragged about himself uh, beheading someone uh, on the uh, prison sink. Uh, and this is his heritage. This is his resume. This is his uh, empire. What's Hamas' goal? Well, Hamas doesn't even know what goal they have because their goal is not in this life. Hamas does not believe in this life. Hence, they want to kill then get killed. After getting killed by the name of Allah, they get rewarded in the afterlife. They are the sword of God on earth, and they see the Jewish people as the uh, uh, disobedient. The ideology that actually uh, sees the Jewish people inferior, sees the Jewish people uh, as uh, enemies of Allah, that in fact, killing the Jewish people is considered a way of worship. Why would any sane, decent human being would go into a farm, a kibbutz, and kill all form of life, to kill a baby, to burn a baby based on religious, basically defines Ethnic cleansing defines a genocide. There is no chance for peace with Hamas. Hamas must be finished. That's it. There is no alternative option. We cannot coexist with Hamas, not as Israel, as free individuals. And by the way, by standing with Israel doesn't mean necessarily that I'm going against the innocent people. If there is any. We are here in Khan Yunis area. Right above us, there is a school. And this is what Hamas been doing. Are there non-involved people in Gaza? The vast majority of Palestinians are complicit with Hamas because they voted for Hamas. They protect Hamas, and most importantly, they fail their moral responsibility to condemn Hamas. The least you could do. Do you follow? You know what he said when they asked him about the massacre? He said, mistakes will be made. We are human, and human makes mistakes. My father said that? Yeah. Where? In one of his interviews. Is he taking responsibility for his mistake? This is the way of Allah, you send people who are like killing machines, going into peaceful communities, wiping everybody out. You call, you call that a mistake, a genocide as a mistake.